Hey, welcome to our scene on the inhaled anesthetics. In a series of three scenes, we're talking about the various different types of anesthetics. The inhaled anesthetics, the IV anesthetics, and the local anesthetics. And all three of these scenes will involve some form of athletics. And athletics will remind us of anesthetics. And in this specific scene, on this soccer field, we're talking about the inhaled anesthetics. And that's why, if we note, there is this random, gigantic inhaler in the middle of the field over here. Again, this reminds us that we're talking about the inhaled anesthetics. And if we take a look, that this inhaler says Mac Stadium, as this is the Mac Stadium. Mac Stadium reminds us of Mac, the minimum alveolar concentration, specifically of inhaled anesthetics. This refers to the value required to prevent 50% of people from moving in response to a noxious stimulus such as skin incision. So again, MAC Stadium reminds us that the MAC value is associated with inhaled anesthetics. Okay, so let's begin talking about the inhaled anesthetics. You might have noticed that on this soccer field over here, there were these soccer players sort of raining down from the sky. These soccer players are raining down. This reminds us that the inhaled anesthetics have the suffix rain, desflurane, enflurane, isoflurane, seboflurane, and methoxyflurane. And halothane. That doesn't have a rain at the end, but ain. But you get the idea. Now, if we take one more look at the inhaler over here, we saw the question mark, which reminds us that the mechanism of these inhaled anesthetics is ultimately unknown. That being said, we note down over here at the bottom that there is this heart and the pair of lungs. The heart and the lungs on the bottom remind us of the myocardial depression and the respiratory depression, which these inhaled anesthetics cause, again, besides anesthesia. If we note on top of the inhaler, we note the bloody brain that is sort of balancing on top of it. This bloody brain reminds us of cerebral blood flow, and the fact that it's high up reminds us that it, the inhaled anesthetics increase cerebral blood flow. Okay, now let's talk about the individual ones and adverse effects associated with them. We first note this calculator on the floor over here. Somebody press the decimal place on this calculator over here, and it's on the floor. Decimal on the floor for desflor, desflurane. The reason why there is this person coughing on the screen is to remind us of the airway irritation seen with desflurane use. Then we note this soccer player over here on the field. We note that he has a halo on his head. Halo for halothane. And he's not kicking a soccer ball, he's kicking a liver, which reminds us of the hepatotoxicity seen with halothane use. In fact, it's no longer used in the US because of its hepatotoxicity. Then we note the ox over here. It's actually a metal ox. A metal ox on the floor for methoxyflurane. He was trying to have this kidney over here, but he couldn't get to it because he was stuck. This kidney on the floor reminds us of the nephrotoxicity, which is why methoxyflurane is not commonly used. We note the N in the floor. N in floor for enflurane. Enflurane is contraindicated in seizure patients, represented by this seizure crown also known as epileptic patients, and this is because they can induce a seizure, as they are pro-convulsants. And finally, the 7 in the floor, for sevoflurane, which is the most common inhaled anesthetic in the US. Now, all of these characters were near this guy over here. This scary, or we'll say malignant guy over here, who's very hot, reminds us of malignant hyperthermia, which we've mentioned so far are associated with. Malignant hyperthermia is a rare, life-threatening condition in which inhaled anesthetics induce severe muscle contractions and hyperthermia. Now, susceptibility is often inherited as an autosomal dominant condition, and mutations in a voltage-sensitive RYR1 gene cause an increase in calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So we have this red gun over here that he has behind him, and he always keeps on him. This red gun reminds us of RYR1. RYR1 gene, which again, a mutation causes the increase in calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, predisposing a patient to malignant hyperthermia. Treatment for malignant hyperthermia includes dantrolene, which is a rionidine receptor antagonist. Okay, there's one more inhaled anesthetic which we want to talk about, and that's represented by this night guy over here, watching the scary malignant hyperthermia monster. But he's away from the monster. And that's because night ox for nitric oxide does not cause malignant hyperthermia. We didn't put this in the scene in order to make things a little bit more simple, but nitrous oxide is an NMDA receptor antagonist. I guess we can imagine that this night ox over here 
antagonizes nomads. Anyway, it is fast acting, as this night ox over here is fast. And at lower concentrations, it actually has analgesic effects, which is why dentists use them. This oxide is associated with the second gas effect. It can also cause expansion of gas in the body cavity. And again, as we mentioned, it does not cause malignant hyperthermia. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this incredibly weird scene on the inhaled anesthetics. Take care.